You know, I cover a lot of severe weather events on this channel, from typhoons to landslides to earthquakes and tsunamis. And what, quite often what catches people off guards is not the, the big name storm systems, but these persistent storm systems. And that is exactly what's been, ha been happening over the last week now with this monsoonal flow across Eastern Asia. From the Philippines, one has actually died here with this recent report out of Cebu's there's widespread flooding there in northern areas of the island. Uh, over towards Thailand, also flash flooding has been taking place and even into Vietnam. Thanks to this consistent flow coming around at high pressure towards the north. You have our shear line, those scattered showers across the Philippines and all that moisture pushing on shore into Vietnam down towards Thailand as well. In fact, you can just take a look here at the wind map and this area is in reds. That's actually indicating about 50 to 80 kilometer per hour sustained winds out here. My goodness, if you are a ship cruising up here uh, towards the Luzon Strait, that is going to be a rough day for you. Talk about motion sickness, but uh, it's all thanks to this monsoon. And this is what I'm talking about when Ever I say, and I know I've been stressing it's the last week in my all my videos, you don't need a named storm system to have problems. And this is 100% the case here with this flow. But if we do get a named storm, definitely couldn't make these problems even worse. So let's talk about this. Yeah, I got two areas marked here of low pressure. One over the Philippines and one back here towards the east of Palau. And I'll get to that one over towards Palau in a second. But let's talk about this little uh, low pressure area. Uh, it was an invest area. I think the key thing is just interacting with that pressure gradient towards the north. Thus, we're getting those consistent rains across northern areas of Luzon, down towards Visayas, and yeah, as I mentioned, in Cebu. I mean, these are some fo more photos out of the, uh, Cebu, north of the city there. We're talking about on the island here. Uh, it, it's just this consistent rainfall. Due to that, over 150 100 families have been evacuated. One death has been reported, as I mentioned. And now we have this new low pressure area back towards the west, or I should say the east, which is going to start to move in and could help make this situation uh, even worse. So uh, it's just one thing after another. We don't have a big name typhoon, but we do have problems out here. So here's that area here, a consistent flow. And then we have our next low pressure area towards the east of Palau towards the south of Guam, which is right about there. So it's way down here. And whenever we see something way down there this time of year, what the problem is, is that this is going to stay south of that monsoonal flow, which is pretty much north of the shear line here. So if you have something in this area, it could be conducive for some sort of development. I'm being very cautious on how I use these words because I don't think this is going to become a typhoon, guys. Problem is, could become a low pressure area as it pushes off here towards the northwest by Sunday to Monday, impacting places around Visayas, southern Luzon, with more rain on top of what we've already been seeing. Saturated ground, the ground can't soak it up anymore. We see that chance of additional flooding. All right. I want to compare up numerical guidance here with you instead of just showing you what I expect or what will happen. Let's let's take a look at what I'm looking at here. So we have our low pressure area here with the GFS model and that consistent flow. But then we show the ECMWF model is just a little bit further towards the south. But here's the issue. These uh, areas in green, blues, that's just showing light the moderate areas of rainfall coming on shore across the mar, down towards Lake Day, southern areas of Luzon. That's more rain on top of the rains we have already been seeing out here. I mean, look at the next five days, 50 to 100 millimeters, thanks to the interaction with that monsoon and that next low coming in from the south. It's going to create that additional rainfall in places we don't already need it. Flooding, potential, especially in urban areas, areas support drainage, those areas that are already saturated and just can't soak up any more rains. Then on top of that, we're talking about the threat of landslide and the seas, especially northern Luzon, dangerous. I'm surprised we haven't seen any more reports of fishermen getting lost out here because boy, those seas are rough. Hey, if you guys found this video update useful, please subscribe. I always appreciate that. I know I say that at the end of every one. But if you haven't subscribed yet, it does honestly help with the analytics, helps help these videos, getting them out there. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate that. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I got a TikTok. 
don't post that there often, but I've been working on it. So if you're uh, one of the younger generations, you want to follow me there, go ahead. Um, yeah. Hey guys, if you got any questions, let me know. Uh, I know today I'm kind of all over the place because there's a lot to talk about here and there's not one defining issue going on here with the floods across Southeast Asia. It is the monsoon. It is this low pressure area and the shear line over the Philippines. And then this next invest area, there is a lot of energy here, but it's not consolidated. Thankfully, because with all of this was consolidated, we'd end up a, a bigger situation, but it's just energy spread out everywhere. And we're just getting this widespread flooding from Vietnam to Thailand to the Philippines. Stay safe out there, guys. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. And as always, thanks for watching.